Oh, man. All right. I am tired. Okay. Go ahead and give me a mic check, please. Can you hear me now? You're low. I'm low. Can you hear me now? How is this? Is this a good uh, level for you? Or is this too low still? Hello, hello, hello. Jet fuel doesn't melt still beams. Testing, testing, testing. Hello, hello, hello. Hashtag never bitner. Never bitner. Never. Never, ever, 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 ever bitner. Why would you want to do something stupid like bitner? There's nothing worse than bitner. (laughs) There's the bubonic plague and then bitner. (laughs) I'm sure I've wrestled him. Because in the chat that we're in... (laughs) Are you telling me there? Are... I said that's Andre Carson. <laughs> <laughs> are you telling me there are Bittner Jimmys everywhere? Hello, bring me your Bittner Jimmys. Let me wrestle them. All right, okay. All right, can you hear me now? Yes. Welcome to a very special episode of We Are Libertarians. It's, uh, I don't know that we're going to call this uh, We Are Libertarians. I think we may call it one-on-one. We Are Libertarians, one-on-one. Sounds a little homoerotic, but I can handle it. The Chris and Greg show. Yeah. Just uh, two dudes. Weekend update for libertarians. Two dudes, one mic. <laughs> two dudes, one mic. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we, are, we are starting to take this seriously. <laughs> <laughs> It's, Much to the chagrin of everybody that listens. It's been four years, and, you know, we've never really taken it seriously. Uh, we just do it for fun, but we feel, you know, like, responsible. Uh, uh, I we've wish... hit puberty. It's time to take this seriously as grown-ups and gentlemen. We are one Facebook like uh, for, away from 15,000. Uh, Two dudes, one mic. Lindsay's watching. Hello. Hello. Uh, we look great. I'm just checking us out on the, uh, on the We Are Libertarians. So if you're on the We Are Libertarians Facebook page, we now like to, uh, live stream this. So that way you can see the magic. You can see Mittens walking across the table as we speak. She's kind of the worst. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of tired of having cats. I know. I was shocked to hear you admit that you were, you know, basically you admitted you were, uh, over pussy. Okay, that's a little unnecessary. <laughs> no, I'm not. Look at see. Look at this drawing that I drew on Saturday. Oh, <laughs> uh. <laughs> Maya wanted a tattoo, so I started out with this. That is an elephant with large eyes. Is that what that is? Yeah, it's spraying itself. Is it spraying itself? Yep. Is that what it is? How wonderful! And then cleanliness I gr- is next to godliness. Then I drew, drew this. This drew this. It looks like a uh, mm, angry beaver. Oh, it's a fat man in a red coat. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's a I fat gotcha. man in a red coat. I understand. And see, so if you're watching the We Are Libertarians live stream uh, on our Facebook, Facebook Live, you could have seen uh, those drawings, uh, but you can go back and archive it. That's just one of the many improvements that we are making here at We Are Libertarians. The Southern Command. Rapidly. It is. So we, I do not recognize this place any longer. It, it is getting a little out of control. You can't see there's a, like a professional light on us. and It used to be a poon palace is what I believe we referred to it as. And now it's yeah. become a glory. You know, it is a regular bona fide studio. I had a girlfriend for nine months and she was okay with whatever I did. The nerdier, the better. I know. The, the better it was. And then you got a compressor. And then I got a compressor, and then that depressed her, and hey she, guys. Had, she had to leave. <laughs> and so now that I'm on my own, all alone out there on my own, <laughs> uh, I, I'm just gone full nerd. Listen, ladies, you're going to have to love me with the size of my board and my compressor. I have a very large board. <laughs> Unlike that Rob Kendall. Very small board. Small board. Tiny. Small I, hands. You, we'll get to the big announcements in a moment. You have been cheating on me. Have I been cheating on you? You, that... you revealed today that like a month ago you bought podcast equipment. I did. And you didn't you didn't consult me? You didn't ask me anything? Well, you know, I've had it in the hopper forever to do liberty and libations. And like, you know, it was a, ser- a period of, uh, you know, fits and starts that were not doing well. And right. And I just, I went ahead and made the plunge. And then like I call it, you know, our mobile unit or whatever. Um, <laughs> Your mobile our unit. Our mobile unit for two guys, one, one mic. <laughs> Have you ever been to two guys, one fish? Never. Okay. 
Should I? Yeah, go right there after you go to meatspin.com. <laughs> I'm not going to do what you did to Vibbert. I'm just saying cakefarts.com. Oh, it's a cake good farts. Is yeah. it like a lemon party? It's a little bit more like meatloaf farts. Oh, okay. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> Outstanding. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, you. Uh, my favorite thing in the world, uh, we were just talking, you're like, yeah, golf is an expensive hobby, but you picked a worst one. because you did. It's, it's true. Like, do you have any idea how much cords cost? Oh, my God. Like, basically, my entire set of clubs, my backup sets, my all my putters, um, and you, probably three or four round, uh, rounds per month could fit into just your top drawer over there. I know. I have a whole bunch of cords. I'm you sorry. You have a lot of black cords. Now, see, why do you have to be racist? <laughs> Little headphones, Rob Nunya. He uh, he donated some. Ryan Ripley, Maya, and the mic bu- stand today. Fifteen bucks a pop. Mic stand. I think that was Sue that donated that. Yeah. Uh, our Amazon wish list. We've got a lot of people helping offset the cost as we grow. You know, we got the computer that was donated. Um, we're gonna. Uh, we've got a compressor thanks to Jason Doolittle, who just um, donated another hundred. Yeah. So I mean, he is he is yeah. funding the the Spangle hobby. Well, that's what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about growth. <laughs> and for a long time, we've been showers and not growers. <laughs> and so... <laughs> Appearances can be deceiving, yes. if you will. Okay. So, so what we're trying to do is we're trying to capitalize on 2016. We know, as well as you know, that we are your favorite libertarian podcast. Everybody likes Lava Flow. Everybody likes Jason Stapleton. Everybody likes Lions of Liberty. Everybody loves Tom Woods. But we're number one in your hearts. You know it, I know it. Greg knows it. Mittens knows it. People tell us this all the time. I know. They just say, (laughs) I've never heard a podcast like this. How did your podcast get so good? It's incredible. It's amazing. You built this podcast and you made Tom Woods pay for it. (laughs) I wish that were true. <laughs> He's got that Ron Paul money. I know. I I wish I had Ron Paul the money. The octopi. Yeah. So, so we are. Uh, we you know, 2016 is an important election cycle. I don't know if you've heard, but uh, there's two real bags of shit running for president, and we are are trying our best to capitalize. Uh, we are trying to <laughs> seize the shit, if you will, t- take advantage of the shit storm that is the 2016 election cycle, because if you listen to this program. Uh, we, we've done this for four years and we have grown a ton as libertarians. Uh, you started as a scumbag Republican. I was always a libertarian, but I somehow justified, uh, the Romney W. Bush libertarian streak. Right. Yes. You, uh, (laughs) Mr. I raised funds for the soldiers support the troops. Big Bill Weld fan. Yeah. <laughs> Much to Roger Chagrin. I'm a Welditarian. <laughs> All right. Uh, now, you know, we we have grown, and so many of you have written into uh, We Are Libertarians at editor at wearelibertarians.com and dropped us notes or on our Facebook page, uh, which I want to apologize if you've written to our Facebook page. I just discovered there was an inbox there, so I just responded to messages from like four or five years ago. Um, but I'm going to, I'm going to do better and check that every day and make sure that if you write us questions to answer, uh, that, that they get on the air, uh, just trying to do better, you know, like the listeners, right? <laughs> uh, I have always liked the listeners. Um, have you, I have, uh, Josiah Crohn's I fucking hate the Crohn's disease, right? Which they say you can get over. And apparently we have, have, ha- has he contacted you? No, he ever since he sent me something which to my uh to my house, I got it and it was I forget what it was, but I it was had... a little a little toy at Christmas and then really? I I didn't hear from him since. That's really weird. I know. I mean, he actually dropped it off because he was driving from Virginia back to Idaho. And he didn't stop by and say hi? I wasn't there. All right, well, thank God you're alive. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, we just uh as twenty sixteen has progressed, you know uh, let's get serious, listeners. Uh, I went through a divorce in 2014, and it was very, very difficult. Uh, and I talk about it a lot here and on the Chris Spangle Show and other podcasts that I do. Uh, the Chris Spangle Show, which, by the way, launched this week, yes. which is another one of the things that we're going to talk about. With the very wonderful Christy Avery. Yes, she was on it. A wall super fan. Um, and so those two years, anytime you go through a traumatic event like a divorce, you you are... 
you're paralyzed <laughs> with with sadness depression and you're just trying to get your life together and uh you know the listeners were were forgiving of our spottiness but you know in 2016 i just looked at the fellows and i said listen i feel good uh i'm i'm committed to this i'm i'm excited about what this year will bring i want to make sure that we have an episode out every week i think we may have only missed one week in 2016 uh, and you know, we started asking donations because as 2016 progressed, this got more expensive to do, uh, you know, like just, you know, one of these, one of these little cords, you get one of these little cords, you know, this right here, just this little tiny four foot cord costs $16. Yeah. So you know, as as we uh, go through this, the amount of people hitting our servers costs more money. Uh, the amount of equipment that it takes to run this costs more money. We want to do a live streaming radio station. Uh, we want to do phone calls. We want to do... We think. No, <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Trust me, I've taken live phone calls. It's not all it's cracked up to be. No, I remember we we'll did see. one. We, had, we got a lot of Ripley. Yeah, just nothing but Ripley. <laughs> and th- there's nothing listeners would want to hear less than more Ripley. <laughs> oh, I love you, Ryan. I know. He's a great guy. Totally kidding. Listen, and we are Libertarians land. So, so it just costs a lot to do this, and uh, it is, it's just one of those things where it's like, listen, I, I'm a single guy that lives in a luxury apartment, and I have a good job, but, you know, I got to pay bills. Greg's got to pay bills. Uh <laughs> Can't and, just live on making memes. Right. And, you know, I really think we're at a point in this where I, I got in February-ish. I just got to a point where I had talked to so many of you and just got the feeling that if we went away, people would miss it. And so I kind of got over the fear of asking for money. And boy, does everybody hate that. Um, but the reason that it, that we, Libertarians hate money. Yeah. <laughs> The reason that we ask for donations now and the reason that we ask you to hit our Amazon wish list are not – Mittens, come on. The reason that we do that is not because Mittens wants more cat food. It's not that we spend the money on my luxury apartment. It's not that we are getting rich off of this by any means. It's that we take everything that you donate and we put it back into it. You know, our Facebook page this year has probably grown by what, four or 5,000 people? At least, yeah. I mean, and it's we're six months in. on 15,000. 15,000, we're probably just hitting it about now. Um, you know, that's added five, 600 new subscribers. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're, you know, we're, we're getting a lot of great feedback from a lot of you. And as, and we want, if you love this podcast, like we love this podcast, uh, then you want more people to know about it because it's helped you grow as a libertarian. It's helped inform you. It entertains you. It, is something that hopefully when it hits your feed, you're excited. A brief escape from the uh, drudgery of day-to-day life. Right. You get to tune in on a Facebook and see my cat <laughs> show its asshole. <laughs> this is a sign of affection, okay? <laughs> Mittens, he loves the, she Mitt, loves the listeners. Mittens loves the listeners so much. She's just <laughs> showing you her asshole. <laughs> um, you know, we... We had Christy on the Chris Spangle show talking about super fan, and I'm a I'm a weird libertarian super fan, and you know what? <laughs> Come on, she's really excited. <laughs> so I, I, I honestly, I, there's so much cat hair everywhere, and I've got it like a HEPA filter trying to filter out the air, and it's just it's not working, and there's ha- cat hair everywhere. <laughs> Could you please stop <laughs> shedding? <sighs> I love you. I'm sorry, baby. I'll never do it again. <laughs> um, you know, the, the, the last mittens, mittens. Can we talk? Seriously. I know. I love you too, baby. Your shirt was so clean when you walked in. I know. I'm trying to do a podcast for the people. Now it's a quilt. Oh, she's kissing me. I can't. I, we got to take a break. Okay, we're back. Uh, I just had to pet my kitty. Uh, so, you know, we... Uh, <sighs> real talk. Uh, <laughs> uh, why are you chewing on my ruler now? Get out of here. Go. <laughs> this podcast and the friendships that I've made through it saved my life the last two years. Um, 
you know, we didn't keep doing the podcast because uh, a, lot, a lot of times over the last couple of years, I was in so much a more emotional uh, state <laughs> that it was it was we did it because, man, I don't want this to die. I like doing this, but this is a chore. I just can't really I, I can't I can't do it this week. And so there was a period of time, you know, through, through 2014 where, you know, Greg and Joe and Maya and everybody kind of carried the banner for me. Uh, and 2015, we were very spotty because I was trying to figure out how to li- live life. Um, and this podcast and the people that have brought, uh, you, you know, Greg and I met one time at a Borders, probably 2010. And, hey, how are you doing? I remember you. Yeah, cool. Yeah. But I didn't realize. Do you like memes? <laughs> <laughs> memes didn't even exist. No. Then. And, you know, I didn't. uh when I invited Greg on somewhere around episode, I think it was like 27. I didn't know he would become my best friend. Uh, Joe would become my best friend. I'd be, you know, Aaron, Harry, uh, Chloe, Brett Bittner. What was that? I'll admit it. Brett Bittner. And all, all the, all the people that you hear on this podcast that are regulars, they would become a great tight circle of friends that have carried me through very difficult times. Uh, and you know, I, not only do I, uh, I think part of the reason that this works is that we genuinely enjoy getting together and talking and, uh, that comes through for the listener as so many of you have told us. And it is a brand of radio that is so hard to replicate the chemistry that we've built. And it is something that I think is truly special. And I know that we're, we're tooting our own horns here, but, This is basically to tell you a little bit about the future of We Are Libertarians. Uh, So many of you over the last six months, as we have started to take this more seriously and start to explain to you the needs that we have to to build out this platform, uh, saying the more that you contribute, the more that we can do. And I think that we have upheld our end of the bargain, and so have you. Above and beyond, really. Above and beyond, yeah, absolutely. Our equipment is, you know, we're we're halfway through the first stage of really kind of building out what we need to make this be successful. You guys have funded the hosting for the rest of the year. Do you guys have it? I mean, it's really hard for me to explain without going into detail about my personal financial situation, which anybody who knows who's gone through a divorce is never good. Uh, it gets really tight, and it's really difficult to not have to worry about my hosting payment for the rest of, you know, for the next 10 months yeah. is such a blessing that means so much to me because so many of you stepped up and donated. You came out to the live shows. You joined us on Patreon. Um, and when we ask you that stuff, it's, it's not making us rich. I now can take that... Because we were able to buy in a yearly package, it saved us money that we were then able to put into Facebook ads, which then grew our listenership, which then grows the community that we're all kind of building uh, around this podcast. Because it's not just about the direct individuals, the 20 people that donate donate their time to We Are Libertarians to be a part of this, or me or Greg. Uh, It's really about the friendships that we're creating in the Facebook group, which you can join on um, the front page of the website. Um, the wall you know, pack, if yeah, you will. Right. You know, like getting to know Christy Avery a little bit better yeah. this past weekend. It's, it's just been great. The live shows that we do, the people that come out, uh, it just, it has been fantastic to get to know you better these last six months. And, uh, you, you guys have rewarded our, uh, it's very difficult to create something, put it out into the world and say, give me money and, yeah. and shit for it. Like, it's very uncomfortable for me. Uh, I don't like doing it, but I know I have to or else this isn't going to grow, you know, and I, it's almost a matter of the show survival at this point. Like we can keep it small mm-hmm. and we can just kind of keep it. But I think everybody watching, everybody listening that is a fan of the show that is involved knows that we've got something special here and that we can take this to the next level should we choose and um and we've chosen that's what today's kind of about yeah so so now that we've kind of talked about where we've been over the last 4 months we're going to talk a little bit about where we're going uh you see that it's just Greg and I here at the table um so let's kind of talk about what's already out there now uh we brought creating maya back 
Uh, I, against the advice of Greg and Joe and everybody else. Uh, it wasn't against it. I always <laughs> thought it was a compelling show. As I, I feared for your personal safety <laughs> based on personal experiences watching your personal safety be uh, compromised. <laughs> right. Uh, ran into Maya, and we just said, you know, we gotta get, we got to do that again. Uh, oh, it's a captivating yeah. show. It's compelling. It's, I mean, it's as raw and heartfelt as you can do. It's just wonderful content. We've, we've uh, created raw audio politics where you can hear uh, raw audio Basically, I go to YouTube and I find interviews, speeches, debates, things that I think are in the public interest that people ought to know and put into the podcast form. I'm an audible learner. I'm not a person that will sit down and watch a three hour debate. I want to listen to it while I'm driving. And I think a lot of you are like that as well. Uh, and then likewise, it's sister podcast. The Gary Johnson for president podcast um, is is purely promotional. There's it's it's a service of we are libertarians. It's not just to promote us, but no. it is to put into podcast form uh, Gary Johnson and Bill Weld's words. Mm-hmm. So there's equal time, and you can hear exactly what they're saying on a lot of these interview shows on Colbert on some of these other places. Uh, and it's and it's you know and it helps people find that we are libertarians. You know, it's got 500 subscribers. Yeah, and that it had like 80 a month ago. I know. Uh, so people are people are hitting iTunes and going and searching for Gary's name, and we're providing that service so people have something there. You know, um, you know, it's you have enough stress in this world where active discovery or active listening or you know going like you know people just are desperate for a more passive uh, informational experience, and that's what's limited libertarians a lot is we don't get on the active channels we don't get the interview one-on-one with brett bayer on fox news we don't get you know the sunday show with chuck todd until recently right and so this makes gary uh, puts gary on a discoverable medium where it's more passive and people can do it as an enjoyable experience where they don't have to you know constantly commit bandwidth to it it's something that i did in 2012 and the 2012 podcasts are still in there uh, you know, his acceptance speech at the 2012 debate, his, you know, some of his speeches from all the way back to, I think, 2008 even. And our YouTube channel, we've got a Gary Johnson for President playlist, which you can go back and watch some of his 1998, 1994 uh, gubernatorial debates in that in that playlist that we've collected. Um, so we're just trying to give you the tools. And if you go to our website and you just search who is Gary Johnson, or I think it's we are libertarians dot com forward slash Gary Johnson. You'll find a, a, a page that you can just share with your friends to promote Gary Johnson. Uh, there's the Path to Libertarianism, which is uh, something I spent a year working on. Uh, I was charged at the Advocates as the marketing director um, to take Hitler to a libertarian in two minutes. And I got it down to about 30. <laughs> and uh, that, that was, though, before Hitler was trendy like he is now. He's right. had quite the comeback in those two years. And uh, So you successfully re- helped in rebranding Hitler. You're welcome. And uh, little Brett Bittner killed that off, uh, and so I I took it back and and liberated it and put it on WeAreLibertarians dot com, and it's just a very basic explanation of three foundational principles of liberty for your friends. There's a guide to the libertarian movement. There's training resources. Uh, there's polling. There's all kinds of stuff at WeAreLibertarians dot com that I've added over the last six months. The re- resources training, um, you know which. Uh, then, and then we've also finally started the Chris Bangle show and really mittens. Uh, she's really going to town today. She missed me. Uh, apparently you've neglected your pussy. Uh, thank you. Very <laughs> mature. Very, very mature. Childish. Childish. Uh, oh, and the live shows we started doing, uh, we've done two live shows. We've got a third one next week. And then every month we're, we're doing a live show at a comedy club, we're going to try and do live memes next week. Um, you know, so <laughs> I think this could be a colossal failure. I just don't, uh, you know, so so those are the things that we've kind of added to the repertoire and the Chris Spangle show, which, you know, I, I love talking about libertarianism, but I have a ton of different interests and a ton of different people that I want to talk to that don't quite fit into this podcast. And uh, that's where they they will go. Uh, and a lot of you have, have responded well to it. I thank you, except for Marcus. Marcus, you can go uh, kill yourself in a fire. Um, he said it was the most boring thing he'd ever heard. Uh, I'm not taking it personally, although I have sent him a glitter bomb uh, to his house downtown in Indianapolis at approximately 486. Three, no, I'm just kidding. Um, no, uh, you know, like guys like Jeff Bibbert, 
you know, our buddy Matt and Tiny, the Obsessive Viewer Podcast, people that we we are associated with that we think are funny and interesting and fit into the We Are Libertarians brand of comedy and 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 talk. Yeah, they they need a place, and that will be the Chris Spangle Show. So please get that feed. Um, and so then we're also launching a few new shows. Mm-hmm. Uh, and first, we'll start with you. Yeah, you're gonna start your own interview show. Yeah, I'm gonna interview um, mainly. Experts on topics, it's going to be more policy-focused. You know, I'm a big fan of Tom Woods and like the Tom Woods model. But um, I also think one, you know, I've always, if you've listened to this show, you know, the one thing I've always felt I could contribute to the libertarian sphere is um, adding to policy debates, adding to our message of, you know, filling out what we'll actually do, how we'll do it, what it would look like. Right. And that's what I want to do with experts in various fields and have them on and talk to people like Mark, Dr. Mark Thornton, like which we've done in the past. And I'll be talking to Dr. Larry Reed, uh, the Foundation for Economic Education, uh, people like Jeffrey Tucker, and see what um, see if we can't make some inroads on actually having legislation for our candidates to attach themselves to when they run. Because sure. I think that's one of the big things we run into when we message is, listen, we're against that, we're against that, these people are stupid, but we don't provide that next, uh, I guess you could say, uh, conceptual uh, idea of what our our version looks like. Sure. And I think as that's going to be necessary as we grow, and I think it's going to be now's the time because of the situation of the political, you know, the two parties electing who they have. And then Gary picking someone like Weld. Yeah. And Weld is somebody who is well-versed in... Mittens knocked. Mittens has now knocked off the recorder. And I'm starting to wonder if maybe she works for the Tom Woods show or something. I think she does. She's I, trying to sabotage us. Right, or she doesn't like Weld. Tell me if you've talked to Stapleton. Tell me now. <laughs> yeah, so it, the thing about the, the, our dynamic is that I love politics, and I love building this platform, and I love new media and podcasting, and I put 20 hours a week into building the platform uh, so Greg can come and sit and talk for three. Give you know, my opinions. Right, yeah. You know, and it's not that I don't have opinions. Uh, it's just that mine are more political in nature. I'd rather talk about Gary Johnson's performance as a candidate than, you know, Rothbard's opinion on ending monetary policy. And the, yeah. Like, I just don't, that's not my wheelhouse, and that is Greg's wheelhouse. And, you know, as we go through this political season, we don't want to neglect that end. We want to make sure that we are giving people foundational principles of libertarianism and not just current events, politics, and the talk uh, that, that that we've been doing these last few and months. And so, like, when they talk to their friends and family, you know, when they ask, well, if you're not going to have the Fed, what are you going to have? Right. You know, so we can talk about those things, and you'll have the information to be able to go out and say, well, here's an alternative. It could be something as simple as, like, what Milton Friedman suggested, where you just have a guaranteed 2% annual inflation rate, and it doesn't go up, doesn't go down. It just stays like that, and it's basically automated. Every year, the money supply increases 2%. Now, that wouldn't be libertarian, but that's a right. possible solution we could promote, and it would sound reasonable rather than leaving it up to a person, you know, a politically appointed person, and bring people to the libertarian side. Yeah. So, because what we try to do at We Are Libertarians, what so much of libertarian media is suit and tie professors. Mm hmm. And they don't put it in the language that everybody speaks, yeah. you know. And so what we want to do is really kind of bring it to the common person. So you can give this podcast to your friends and family. I'm trying to clean up my language. Uh, I'm trying to do better <laughs> on that respect. It's a matter of being triggered. One guy, one guy, when we started allowing cussing like 100 episodes ago, oh. like, I can't, I can't play it loudly at work anymore. Yeah. I'm like, well, maybe you shouldn't have in the first place. Like, <laughs> you haven't met my Aunt Donna, okay? <laughs> <laughs> or the associate pastor. So so that is upcoming. Um, we're also going, you know, we do very long episodes, uh, and we're going to start breaking those up. We're, we're going to record and kind of batch uh, those long episodes into two different episodes a week. Uh, and the reason we do that is because you, dear listener, you love those long episodes, but, you know, in talking to a few people, we feel like that might be a barrier to new listeners that they look at that and they go, man, I just don't want to commit two or three hours to a podcast. And so we don't want to do anything that is going to turn anybody off and like not even give us a chance just because of the, the time length. 
So you're not going to get less of the podcast. You're actually going to get more. It's going to be kind of the same thing. We're also adding some formatting. We're adding uh, thanks to um, my brother just texted me and asked if he wants me to uh, to be my co-host on the Chris Spangle show. Um, <laughs> no, he <laughs> he he weaseled his way into best man at my wedding. <laughs> Look how that turned out. Um, Everything you're involved in is a failure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so, so yeah, we just want to, we're kind of, kind of break it up and, and we've added things to Aaron Ewert. He made a donation the last episode that we went and we bought some production music and you, you heard that at the beginning, some network IDs, some liners, some bumpers, some various uh, production elements that kind of make us sound a little more professional. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so look for the episodes to be the same, but just different a little bit. Uh, that brings us to what we're doing here on a Monday night. Normally we release the episodes on a Friday and it is a Monday night and we're here recording. And, uh, that's because that's what we're going to be doing from here on out. Greg and I are going to get together two nights of the week and we're going to record the regular episode with the round table of friends that we normally have. But then on Monday nights, we're going to do a little news roundup, uh, answer your questions, talk about current events that happened over the weekend, and just give you a little bonus show. But the catch is, this will not be a free podcast. It will not be going into the free feed. We are working out a way to give a premium podcast. So we are going to, uh, you know, we have a lot of great people who donate to us, and, you know, we have been remiss and giving them uh, special favors. Um, Prima Nocta was offered to all of them, uh, but they did not want to make love to Dear Leader. They that, wanted, didn't, that didn't go over well? No. They I did can't not, believe that. They did not want to be cuckolded, and their wives <laughs> did not want the touch of Dear Leader. Um, <laughs> the generous and thorough embrace. Uh, some women did, but their husbands objected mightily, and then I was restrained by the police and removed from the property. Um, but... So so we're going to be adding some some membership uh to the We Are Libertarians universe. Uh so there will be some things that will not just be free and open. And that is because we want to in we want to grow. We want to buy more advertisements. You know, if we were to advertise on the Thomas Wood show or on Jason Stapleton's show or you know, to Lions for Liberty, Lions or... for Liberty, or other libertarian outlets or if we advertised in non-libertarian outlets, uh, we would get more listeners and more listeners would mean more libertarians. And to do that, we need capital. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, we are, we have two phases of growth in terms of equipment that we want to achieve. They're both in Amazon wish list. We're halfway through number one. Um, we're still about five, $600 away from finishing that round, uh, that we need to finish out. Uh, there's, uh, then there's probably you know anywhere from three to four thousand dollars in that second round that we'd like to to fill out to to really get us to a point where the equipment is future proof and sounding even better than it does and give us uh, absolutely zero excuses in terms of capability uh, and to do more and. Yeah. Um, because our goal at one point uh, in the future is to do this full time, to give you daily full content. Uh, and we are we are doing our best as this is the, this is our hobby. Um, but in the future, we would love to do this for you full time. But the market needs to demand it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so to do that, we we need to build a market. And so we're going to we don't we don't want to do advertising. Um, I don't, the, the extent of the advertising that we do on the show, I think needs to be for other We Are Libertarians properties, you know, just little short promos for other podcasts, just so you know that we have at WeAreLibertarians.com several other shows that you can go and listen to if you like this brand of talk and comedy and, and politics, um, and, and to support other shows. Uh, but we don't want to, you know, it's just, it's such a pain in the butt. And I don't think the market is there in terms of podcast advertising. Uh, I work for a major radio outlet and the podcast is 10 times more <laughs> downloaded than this one. And podcasts 
That is a hard ad- podcast to advertise. People haven't figured out how to monetize it yet. Yeah. That day's coming. It's just not here yet. Yeah. And so I told Joe in 2013 when we started talking about monetizing the podcast and, and making it self-sustaining, I said, we're just not there yet. It'll be 2016, and it'll be when people just message us and start wanting to give us money. And we're kind of there, to be honest. I mean, we're kind of at a point where to do more, we need more equipment and we need more listeners and we need your help to do that. So, um, you know, if, if you want more content, then we need you to sign up and be a member. And so what you will get for those memberships, uh, we've kind of privately talked that out. We're not ready to totally roll that out yet. Uh, I have to, I have to go in and build it. So it may take me, uh, anywhere from a day to a week. I think the 24 hour webcam of the dear leader Poon palace is, uh, if if you're hairy, that's available. <laughs> but there's a lot of nudity. <laughs> um, there's a lot of nudity, and it's only me. Uh, uh, in the, in the old days, there would. <laughs> and as I learned today, you are known for the size of your box. Thank you. Yes, very mature. Very mature. Sorry, you're making fun of my black cables in my box. What next? <laughs> you're going to make fun of the size of my shoes. Your memes. My memes. Uh, I heard, but you have a big board. Thank you. Thank Much you. bigger than Rob Kendall's board. Oh, his board is tiny. Tiny board. Tiny board. Tiny board. Uh, we're talking to Rob Kendall about maybe doing a new show. Um, you know, so, so yeah, we're, the majority of what we're going to do is still free. But if you contribute $5, 10 25 $50 a month, we're going to make sure that it's worth your while. You know, uh, we don't – we give you, I think, $25 a month worth of entertainment for free, in my opinion. We hope. Uh, the market seems to think that that's $1 a month, but, (laughs) um, you know, and, and we want to make it easier. We want to make it, uh, easier for you to, uh, be a part of this community and be a part of what we're doing and being a part of our growth. And the more time we commit to it, the better this is going to get. Yeah. And this allows us to commit more time to it, to change it from something where we do it as a get together on Thursdays to something we now have a, you know, a vision forward and a path we're going to reach. And so that will commit, you know, it's like tonight. This is yep. a commitment towards more content, better content, you know, crossing the threshold from a gathering of well-informed libertarians from different perspectives to uh, professional commentary and analysis yeah. going forward. And it is solely because of the 20 to 40 people that have given over the last six months. Completely. And I can't I, thank you. I mean, you know, just you, flat out. You guys can't can't thank them enough. And, you know, they're we are the house that they built. Yeah. You know, uh, and so so we want to thank you. And, you know, because you have rewarded us with your trust and with your ears and with your shares on Facebook and your reviews on iTunes and your dollars and meme likes and your meme likes, uh, we we want to give back um, and we love doing this. And we're more surprised than anyone that many of you like it. <laughs> I mean, we hate our own opinions. Right. I, I mean, my cat doesn't even like me. Like, I can't keep a girlfriend or a wife or a cat. Like, you just like me because I give you food, right? Yeah. Uh, so, so yeah. Uh, so that is the way forward. Um, you know, Joe. Joe's committed. Joe's going to be more involved. We love Joe. Uh, you know, Jeremiah. The 4-H Henry County legend, the man with the golden pipes. Chloe, Chloe is going to be, um, start, uh, uh, Maya's trying to get in on the, uh, on the act here. She's messaging me. Um, Chloe's now done with Miss America stuff, so she'll be around a lot more. So yeah, bright days ahead. If you want to contribute, um, as a writer, um, then you, there's a submissions page, uh, check out We Are Libertarians. It's all there. I try to make it as, as user friendly as possible, but yeah. You know, you have made this hobby worthwhile, and so, you know, we're going to do more and make sure that uh, we're growing libertarians and we're growing ourselves through this and that we're growing you. So just a, just an update, you know, there's going to be a, a premium, at least one premium show right now, and that will be Greg and I getting together on Monday nights and talking. Uh, there's going to be other premium shows. We're probably going to move the live show. Uh, to a paid show uh, and paid video. So if you want to see and hear the live podcast from Morty's Comedy Joint, you're going to have to go or you're going to have to uh, be a monthly donor. Uh, and we're just going to test this out and see how it works. So yeah. I, I think I think many of you, even if it's two people, 
then heck, that is $10 extra a month that we can throw towards advertising and... Uh, Spreading liberty. Yep. And it's so, so appreciated and uh, just, we're grateful. Yes, very humbled. Yeah. Humbled. Well, I don't know about humbled. In our millennial way. Humbled or humble? <laughs> humbled that anyone would, uh, where I'm always humbled that anyone would give money. Uh, surprised and excited. Yeah. And uh, you know what? What do you get for that donation? More of me. <laughs> Merry so, Christmas. <laughs> so that is the state of the union of We Are Libertarians as we move through 2016 and into the future. Uh, it is basically just more content. Yeah. And uh, to fund the resources that more content takes, we're just going to we're gonna roll out a subscriber model and uh, not just beg for donations, but but give you a little something extra for your for your donations in return. Yep, try to validate our idea. Yep. So, uh, because we know you work jobs, probably jobs you don't like. You know, probably jobs that are uh, not nearly as much fun as I don't know. Uh, Listening to podcasts, s- sitting around all day, and <laughs> there's some tearing there's some, up my shit. There's some there's some hatred towards mittens today. Mittens and I are not not on good terms. I'm she, gonna say. If this was a Facebook relationship, it would say it's complicated. She's purring right now. So, all right. Well, thank you guys so much for listening. Uh, we're not going to charge for this giant commercial. Um, but, uh, yeah, you know, we're I'm getting contributions as we speak from Kirk French, Jason Doolittle, Al- Alyssa Sagato, um, and, and many more of you. And we just uh, thank you so much for that. You You're guys, very wonderful. You guys are the best. And, uh, you know... I think we've done it. I don't think we need to do better next time. I think we've succeeded. Have oh, we... Are, we, are we not going to talk any of the news topics? Oh, do you want to do a show now? I don't care. All right, let's do it. Let's, uh, let's well, pause. Well, I mean, you, you were triggered. Let's pause. Uh-huh. All right, and make a, sa- a, diff- a different episode. So, uh, you know, thank you guys. I appreciate it. You guys are just the best. Uh, and thank you again. I'm going to say thank you for the 800th time. Welcome to this special episode of, I don't know, what are we going to call this? Have we decided a name? Or are we going to call it? Two we, Guys, we, One Mike? Two Guys, One Mike. That's what we'll call it. We can't get better than that. We, I mean, that's fitting for us. We we are sharing a mic like uh, Richie Sambora <laughs> and and uh, what's the other dude? Uh, not Rich, Richie Sambora is not even the famous one. It's Bon Jovi. Bon Jovi. The, yeah. Uh, yeah, so welcome to Two Guys, One Mike. <laughs> this is uh, Chris Spangle and Greg Lenz, as you know, and this is the first edition of the Two Guys, One Mike show. Uh, and thank you to you who are paying subscribers for this episode, is what I will say here. We're giving this away for free. This is just your little taste. We're drug dealers. Right. Yeah, this, we're creating demand. We're just giving you a little taste. Mm-hmm. Just try one. Just you know? try one. And give five bucks a month. That's it. Just start there. You know, <laughs> five bucks. You the half half a Netflix. Thousand bucks a month gets you a weekend stay in the uh, house Casa de Spangle. We're giving you like seven hours a week uh, on the We Are Libertarians network of of great original content. That's way better than Orange Is the New Black. Oh yeah. So, uh, damn it. Two guys one mic dot com is taken. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. That's all right. We'll figure it out. This we'll is, figure this, it this, out. We're testing it's a, it. It's a test. Yeah, test run. Technically, that's a lie too, because we have multiple mics. Right. Thank you, Maya, for uh, for checking that. Some somehow Maya was the one that figured out two guys one mic was taken. <laughs> Can't even imagine. By the way, two guys one fish change your life. <laughs> if uh, you work in the kind of work environment that I do, and your coworker goes to the bathroom for number two. Make sure they come back to either Two Guys One Fish or meet, <laughs> Meatspin.com. So, well, this is our first go round. So yeah. I imagine I kind of imagine this as like a Seth Meyers weekend update of sorts for libertarian perspective of news and events with some comedy. Only not as gay. Yeah, we're more alpha. Yeah, we're, we're way more alpha. way more alpha. Way. We say things like gay, yeah. like men. <laughs> we put, we put down the LGBT community like assholes. I saw the best meme. I'm sorry. Overheard LGBT. I don't even like tomato. <laughs> Someone thought it was BLT. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so maybe we're not as quick as Seth Meyers. <laughs> Um, so so yeah so this past weekend uh, I'll let you lead with the news story that you're uh, most triggered by 
You made several Facebook statuses that would have Rob Kendall up in arms today. I listen. I'm not triggered by it. I just think it's stunning. Uh, it, the Associated Press came out today. Corey Lewandowski uh, got fired today, mm-hmm. and he was the campaign manager that ran, you know, the Trump campaign up until it looked like Trump was serious and there was going to be a floor fight. And so they brought in uh, Monty, Paul Manafort, Paul Manafort, former uh, partner of Roger Stone back in the golden era. Uh, right. Uh, uh, golden era. And uh, Roger Stone, obviously a libertarian guy uh, who helped Gary Johnson on his 2012 campaign, now helping Ron, uh, Ron Paul, Donald Trump. Uh, R- Roger is known for his dirty tricks. Roger is... Uh, one of the Willie Horton ad guys. I mean, the man he, has a tattoo of uh, Richard, Richard Nixon, Nixon on his back. Yeah, he is. He is quite the dandy. He is an interesting fellow. I love Roger, but you either love him or my God, do you hate him? I, if I hated him, I'm not going to say anything bad about him. Uh, <laughs> there's some apocryphal th- things that have happened in his time in the Libertarian Party, which I will not speak about because I'm not going to get in trouble. Uh, but. Yeah, Roger is helping with his campaign, and Corey Lewandowski and Manafort have been at odds at times. Well, one's the ultimate country club Republican who has gone and helped political campaigns internationally. I mean, and then the other one is the guy that's the the untested Brook, like Brooklyn brawler. He looks like he crawled out of the Beach Grove Walmart <laughs> on a Friday night after a meth bend. He got a crew cut, and my God, the guy is—he's right. the Republican Rahm Emanuel. I was thinking Himmler, but okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, Corey Lewandowski is the one who allegedly assaulted Michelle Fields. Uh, Charges were dropped. He just seems like a scumbag to me. I mean, I'm, I'm going to... He, he's that Roger Stone school of uh, of political act or political uh, operative. Yeah, so Lewandowski is out, and as they were discussing it, the AP reported that Donald Trump has... they uh, His campaign estimates... That he has 30 campaign employees across the nation. Now, let me give you a comparison. <laughs> Gary Johnson probably has that many yeah. on the payroll, at least. Well, maybe not payroll. I, I mean, in terms of, like, state directors, uh, there's always a state director for, for any campaign. And Gary has as many state directors as the other two, I'm sure. It's just the regional director right. even paid as but in, thus far. But in terms of paid staff, I'm sure Gary is is far closer to Trump than he is Hillary, yes. who's around 500. Oh, she's got 30 in a, you know, hell, a Hendricks County office in Indiana. Yeah, know? Bernie has around 200, and he's still running. You know, so um, it, it just is stunning to me that the front runner and someone who, oh well, he won the primary. It's like, yeah, but t- uh, Ted Cruz had 40, uh, and Hillary has 500. And so at this point, you're running against not Ted Cruz, but Hillary Clinton. And Hillary Clinton has the Obama machine plus the Clinton machine plus the DNC plus Voter database, you know, and at the end of the day, the Democrats are going to unite around Hillary yeah. and fight against Trump. And Trump is in a divided party and you're just not going to, you know, so his plan is to get the Republican Party, the RNC, the state parties, the county parties, the local activists to go out and stump for him and be his campaign team. Uh, you know, our friend Jason Pye down in Georgia just resigned because he said flat out, I will not vote for him. He's one of the PR guys for, I think he's a PR guy, but he works for Freedom Works. Um, so it's stunning to me that a Republican candidate in nearly July only has 30 employees and has such an anemic, baffling campaign plan uh, because you can say, yeah, I'm going to rely on the RNC. They're going to run the day to day. I'm going to rely on the state and local parties. But if you've ever been involved in politics at the local level, it's people like you and me who just, you know, not, well, people like you, I have 10 years of political experience and ran a statewide political party, but you know, Greg, you've never really been involved in, in grassroots organizing. Yeah, I mean, definitely the grassroots organization of like a small organization right. at all. So you can't you can't troubleshoot when stuff happens. You you haven't maybe you haven't created a walking list. You haven't done these basic things that the canvassing aspects. Right. Of where, organizing. Whereas somebody like Podesta and some of these Hillary Clinton people have done it for damn near forty years. And these five hundred employees, these people go out and they organize for a living. That's what they do. They're professional campaign hacks. and They get out the vote. 
Yeah, and and so our friend Rob Kendall, the ultimate Trump uh, uh, apologist, said, "Oh well, you just should see these people. These people are crazy about Trump. They know it's like, yeah, but they don't have experience, and they're doing it as volunteers. And volunteers are never going to be as adept or as uh, involved as paid staffers in, in organizing people. I'm just making sure that I hit start over here. Okay, good. Um, you know, so it." Grassroots really are what win campaigns, and so when you're talking five, six hundred to thirty, and you don't even have an accurate number, you tell the AP, "I think it's around," you know, and you're firing your 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 main campaign guy. Well, I in mean, that was a- it's that doesn't look good for Trump at all. No, I mean this is this is the I mean this is the the I guess crisis point of his campaign right. thus far. Um, the thing, the difference between Manafort and Lewandowski. Um, Simply comes down to Lewandowski let you know it was let Trump be Trump, and he did what he could from an organizational aspect, got people in line, you know, prevented like you know he's the kind of guy that would revoke the Washington Post press credentials. Right. Whereas Manafort is the ultimate system guy. He's the guy that's going to come in. He's going to broker the you know he's going to facilitate the Paul Ryan you know interactions. He's going to facilitate the interactions with the RNC. And so I do think this, and shockingly, yes, it's a big sap, or uh, it really zaps momentum right now. But luckily, we're at a point in the election cycle, if you're on a Team Trump, where there's plenty of time to recover. Sure. There's plenty of time to get the RNC behind them, because they've actually been building out the apparatus with regardless of working with Team Trump, because there isn't really a Team Trump. Right. You know, it's a media team and the messaging team, and that's it. Um the one thing I do think that is overestimated is this is a the press has have piled on because they've been waiting for this moment mm-hmm. and so they could not wait to seize on this and be like it's total disarray this All is right. the absolute end the reality is Donald Trump's there is no um case you know there's no case study for it right there's no way to say that well if this is the case if this were the case with uh, Mitt Romney the, the campaign would be over right Donald Trump, I believe, right now is trying to, you know, he's only been a, a politician now for a year. Sure. He's learning, getting up to speed, and the one thing I think this is a positive is this is a sign that he is willing to learn. <sighs> by take, by getting Manafort on, like, because he could have yeah. just, if it were Donald Trump, he would have continued doing what Lewandowski would have told him. Right. By doing uh, this. See, I don't think anybody tells Donald Trump. Well, no, 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 but do. like he, he would have kept a yes boy around. Right. right and he right. didn't. He was willing to change direction because he saw what Manafort was able to pull off with the delegates where he surpassed the delegate totals they anyone mm-hmm. projected and guaranteed him the nominations. Right. Assuming there's no, you know, really odd situation where delegates don't vote for him. Um, but I, I actually think it's a positive sign because right now I don't think anything's happened in the election that is going to determine the election. I think I hate to say it, but I think we're realistically looking at another um, lone wolf style attack, media attack. Hmm. And I think Donald Trump got hit hard on this one. But I think if there's another type of gu- like attack with a gunman or something like that, it will change the tide. Because with San Bernardino and then his response this time really hurt him. If he gets another time and he comes down, like for instance today. The Department of Justice and Loretta uh, Loretta Lynn were on Meet the Press with Chuck Todd Sunday. Loretta Lynch. L- Loretta, yeah, 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 not Loretta, Loretta Lynn. Lynn. <laughs> yeah, right. uh, Loretta Lynch. Um, and they redacted all references to his declarations to uh, Abu Bakr al Baghdadi <laughs> and then the Islamic State. They uh, censored those out. Really. The reason why is that, it, and this is actually pretty common in foreign policy circles, is that by referring to it and promoting it in the press, it spreads the propaganda machine for them and helps them recruit. Mm-hmm. Versus uh, competing against like Jabhat al Nusra in Syria or competing against Al Qaeda, right? And so it like it the, the the response by the right wing press is they refuse to call it Islamic radicalism. Sure. When the reality is the president's response to it was actually correct. Is that right. it does us no benefit by whether we call it Islamic radicalism, we call it jihadism, or we call it whatever. You know, at the end of the day, anything that helps their cause, we need to not do. Yeah. And so, but the right wing was able to seize on this, and now this is the main story. And stories like this about the president being an apologist for Islam, radical Islam, is something that could get picked up depending upon another attack. Yeah, but the the uh, Trump tweeting out that you know the president is a secret Muslim, and I mean that does nothing to help him. No, I but mean, that's, that's, that's that's what I mean. He has to learn his way through it. But uh, assuming that the, another but, but, attack were to happen, and he. Did it right? Sure. I think the the American electorate is just upset. 
Sure. They're upset about the choices they have. They're upset about... Well, well we've had a, a president that has learned on the job. Do we want another one? Right. But no one can do that job. Sure. I, I, don't, I mean, I don't know who can do that. The job now is... The size of the bureaucracy is impossible to manage. Right. You know, I mean, I feel like the bureaucracy runs itself and the president gets lucky when he gets on a winning streak. Mm-hmm. You know, but I don't know. I think I think Donald Trump, I don't see it as like a nail in the coffin. I see it as a necessary wake up call that's early enough on. He has a chance to come out of this. And really, if anyone's going to hang themselves, it's going to be Hillary Clinton. Yeah. <laughs> She's a terrible candidate. <laughs> In every way. Flat out. I mean, socialism, if you remember eight years ago when Barack Obama, it's like if you called him a socialist, people were like, that's a dirty word. Don't call him that. You know, and people were losing. Now they're voting for Bernie. Right. And now they're voting for a 74-year-old socialist. From the whitest state in the country. You know, because who is arguably not going to live through his term just because they hate Hillary so much. And that's her party. She's He's just, not even in the party. She's like, you could not draw up a less sincere or authentic candidate right. with a big, even if it's not true her sense of entitlement just comes across in every interaction in every way she's gollum she's <laughs> gollum it's my fresh yeah. <laughs> like you, you don't want to hate her right necessarily because you're like yes it's historic it's the first female nominee of the democratic party and has you know the probably the front runner to be the president um but god you just can't even you yeah know? you just yeah. can't even swallow it um but yeah. yeah, no, that's been part of the problem, I think. <laughs> that's unfortunately. She just, she just can't even swallow it. <laughs> I'm sorry, that was misogynistic. Hashtag blue dress props. I'm I'm out I'm out of control today. <laughs> I need to go to PC camp. You're no oh god. Um <laughs> please but, <laughs> teach me to not trigger. <laughs> no, I mean those are really the two main uh news stories over the weekend. Um I just thought it was you had been silent on Trump for a while. Oh yeah, because it doesn't matter at this but, point. But then know. today <laughs> It sh- I just was pointing out <laughs> that I was putting on my uh, my hat of uh, political commentator and political experienced person. Um, you can't win a national presidential race with 30 paid staffers. And even if so, let's say, you know, you, you could if Hillary had 45, but Hillary's got 500 and. I just don't paid staff make a difference because paid staff like think if you're a libertarian, think about your libertarian party. You know, here in the Libertarian Party of Indiana, I was the paid executive director. I spent full, you know, I worked for four years doing full time work. There's my awards, bitches, you know, for outstanding volunteer service to the Libertarian Party, even though it wasn't technically volunteer. Basically, trust me, I work for six dollars an hour as volunteer. (laughs) Here, uh, and then the indentured service, and then the last four years they haven't had an executive director. And think about how anemic the the local party has been. Now they've fought their way through and risen to the moment here in 2016 um, without paid staff in the local Libertarian Party. But you know, think about all that the National Libertarian Party does for you, local affiliate. You know, those are paid staffers that do things. And so to say that a volunteer army, unlike any other, is going to get the job done is just not not realistic because who's going to design the materials? Who's going to uh, who's going to design the materials, print the materials, source the materials, distribute the materials, organize it to be distributed? Who's going to put the plan together to distribute it? Who's going to uh, train the volunteers to go out and distribute the literature? You know, these are very fundamental things that are very difficult and very complicated and very, you know, you're talking about moving an army of volunteers, giving them the resources to fight that war and and execute your plan perfectly. And you can't rely on paid staff. And let me be frank, if the state directors and the local campaign coordinators per district in other states are of the same quality that they were here. The people that were on stage, some of the people that were up on stage at that Trump rally we went to are jokes. You know, there's one guy who lost his primary to Andy Horning, who had been the most famous Libertarian Party person. He lost by, you know, uh, what, 70 to 30, 40 percent in a primary. He couldn't, he couldn't, 
beat the Libertarian Party guy in a Republican primary. Who's now ru- who's now running the seventh district? District eight against Larry Bouchon. Oh, okay. And, yeah, yeah, but I'm the treasurer for his. Uh, oh, okay. And, and uh, web webmaster. Yeah. I so I just uh, I just look at that and I go, that is not good. You know, that is that is that is do Hillary unless. <laughs> It's great for Gary Johnson because Trump will be ineffective. Trump will get a lot of media, but Trump will get a lot of bad media. And so what that does is that gives Gary Johnson an opportunity to be the rational option. And then if Libertarian Party people can rise to the occasion and Gary Johnson can get enough funding to get paid staff and to not have the same organizational grassroots problems that Trump's going to have – then that's a that's a real opportunity for Gary Johnson to be the alternative. Hillary, but neither of them are going to match Hillary at this point. Um, maybe, maybe Trump can onboard enough people to do it. But we're we're in Ju- we're in July, right? We're we're getting ready to go to the to the convention. The convention sucks up a ton of resources, and then you're in August. And August are kind of dead days. August is dead days. So I feel like we're kind of in dead days because it's right. been so intense. August is yeah, absolutely. And then August is going to be debate prep. You're going to start getting into debates, and then September you got to roll. September is, and if you're running a campaign, what you have to do in your local race, as I've explained, is if you're a local candidate, you need to knock on doors three times. You should have already knocked on every door in your district by now, and then you need to do it. Twice from September until the week before Election Day. Right. And then if you can, then the third time. So think about the amount of people in your district that it takes to knock on a door four times because you're just not because it's a a law of averages. You got to knock, knock, knock. So I I think he's at an incredible disadvantage, which I'm happy about because he's an absolute insane person that should never be anywhere near the presidency. But then again, so is Hillary. So it doesn't make me feel any better. No, I mean, I see it a little bit differently just because I think that there is no traditional playbook to go by, but the, the Republican convention is going to tell us everything. Sure. If there is a big healing moment and Manafort can broker a, you know, a unity, everybody get on the same page or some type of the same page around messaging and around getting Trump to become less incendiary when he misses, <laughs> you know, which is tough to do, but it's a good sign that he's trusting Manafort. Um, I think there's a possibility that he can get something around 250 to 300 paid staffers nationally. And then Donald Trump's a little different because of the universal brand ID. Yeah. Um, that really is worth its weight in gold for a, a candidate that's from out, outside. I mean, yeah, but people I- like Donald Trump. They buy on Trump and his policy. It's shown time and time again. They don't even know his policies. They don't understand him. And so that is a built-in benefit to Donald Trump. But I don't know how much it is worth. I just know that it is there, and that's not the case for many candidates that have ever run. These these two candidates have darn near a hundred percent name ID, and they're and that's usually not the case, right? And their negatives are off the charts. There's never been any race like this, right? And no one's ever campaigned like Donald Trump. Sure, Hillary Clinton is the one person that he can stand up there and say, "Yeah, I bought you." Yeah, you didn't do a good job. Well, we're gonna see if it, because the thing about Trump is that Trump has taken the traditional projections of people like me who have played by the rules the, their entire life, have studied the rules, have applied the rules. We're going to see if his uh, meta media campaign can take on the best grassroots organization that has ever been devised. And I think this is a sign, though, that he's going to do both. He, I mean, he's way, he's way behind. Yeah. He is way behind, but I think getting Lewandrowski out is a step that they're going to run a ground campaign. They just, this happened today. Right. And we'll see how quickly they can assimilate one. Right. When you've got a toxic person, like I think Lewandowski probably was. Oh, he burned every bridge they had. And, you know, there's still going to be people loyal to that guy. You've got divisiveness. And then, you know, you've got to clean house. You've got to start over. You've got to, you've got to go into every phase of a presidential cycle completely united as a campaign it is it is see the camaraderie and brotherhood of working on a campaign is similar to what you would see in Band of Brothers right. or Saving Private Ryan. It's certainly it's it, I, I guess you could argue it's a serious, but you know it's all about killing people if you get elected. But 
You know, if it's it's the same camaraderie, and if you've got a toxic individual in your organization, you gotta you gotta get rid of them. You do, and he was preventing the re- any chance. <laughs> If he had kept Corey and Corey had been the lead on this, the election was over. It's why I had to fire Galt. Yeah. I was dear leader and Galt was undermining my authority and he had to go. He had to go. He had to go back. It's why Maya had to go. Maya had to go back. And luckily that you're uh, magnanimous and generous and thorough and allow them to come back in. But uh... Dear leader gives and he gives and he gives until he has nothing to give left. (laughs) And then he resents and is angry for giving. And then then goes back to the well for a second. (laughs) Right. And then after he learns his lesson the second time, he does it a third and then all the way up until he never learns again. Oh, well, I think uh, that kind of covers those two. All right. Um, what do we got next? The only thing, last thing, and this was quick, was the, the uh, most, no one's talking about the Brexit. I've yet to see a yeah. libertarian talk about the Brexit. And this is something that an international finance would have reverberations all the way through the U.S. economy. It's, okay. And on uh, Thursday, or on, Explain what the Brexit is. So it is Britain having a national referendum to leave the European Union. Okay. I think I'm in favor of that, and I don't. I know nothing. Well, okay, right. So <laughs> I know nothing about it. I, I'm in Br- favor. Britain, <laughs> Britain leaving, it'd be like when Greece tried to leave, and then right. everyone tried to keep them to stay in, and right. just keep them to giving money over and over. Right, but Greece is a scumbag country, and Britain is a Britain. Black, right. Brit- and Britain's got their own currency already, the pound. Right. And so they actually lose a lot. Like, you know what Trump talks about, the remittances where illegal immigrants come here and then send the money back to Mexico? Sure. So they actually have that problem because they have that legislated in. And, and so since they are a, con- a colonial, you know, the colonial empire. I finish that country. Country. Yeah. Um, since they're a country colonial. Yeah. Col- yeah. You, sorry. You, you forgot your re. Yeah. The re. The T-R-Y. <laughs> the re is very the <laughs> important. Tree, the tree is very, very important. Um, but so they have this problem where their money is made. So like a person comes to Britain, makes mm-hmm. the money, and then sends it back to the Cayman Islands. Right. Money's not spent locally. And so okay. that's part of the European <laughs> Union. Another thing is the welfare payments to people that are coming in for the first time from these countries. They come in, they're immediately eligible, and it's a, it is a tax burden until they are able to get off of the welfare system. Sure. Um, another thing, too, is that you know they want to, people to adopt the euro, where having the pound gives them the ability to exit at any time. It's their escape hatch. Right. Um, and then lastly, it is... Um, it lets. I mean, it it gives them the sovereignty to be their own country and not be bound by European Union, which was originally created just to keep the Germans and the French from going to war. You know, the Germans and the French historically they, you know, they love right. to go to war, and they thought by intertwining the economies in the long run they could have a single currency. It would <laughs> it, it have people be you know conduct trade together, keep the economies relatively normalized. But what's happened over time is that when like let's say um, Germany. Has a real, they have a, an economic advantage, and sure. France doesn't. You end up having a deficit, like the United States does with China. Right. Well, in Germany, if they had their own currency, or if France had their own currency, they could print more money, make their exports more attractive, sure, and then get up, climb up to the level with Germany, so they'd be balanced out. Right. When you don't have that as an option, the only option in economies that are bound together is labor mobility. The problem is people can't go from France to Germany to where the jobs are, where the growth is within the EU. Why so, is that? Because they haven't negotiated that. Okay. They haven't negotiated citizenship within the framework of the European Union. Right. So so monetarily they're connected, but in terms of citizenship and work visas, right. they're not. And right. so then you end up having these huge imbalances like you do in Greece where the countries that are um, are perpetually at the bottom because they don't have the tools mm-hmm. to devalue their exports in order to become competitive – and they don't have the labor mobility for the people that live in France to go get jobs in Germany to balance sure. it out. And so it's just created this odd situation where Britain has, the, has maintained the ability to leave. And on June 23rd, we're going to figure out if, the Brit- if Britain is leaving the European Union, which will signal the decline of the entire thing. So today's the 20th. Yep. So in three days. In three days, we'll there's going to be out. a national referendum. Okay. Which well, will be fascinating. Yeah. I know that the uh, libertarianish wing is has always been against the EU. Yep. I think people like Friedman and Rothbard or uh, you know libertarian economists always wrote against the EU and uh, said that it was a bad idea. Yeah. And and, and every libertarian person like Ian Gerald that I follow uh, over in England, they are very much in favor of leaving leaving it because you know it, while as libertarians. You know, jo- joking tablecloth aside, we're we're not nationalists, and so we're not 
we're not regionalists, you know, like they, we're not we, globalists. We're not regionalists. We're not nationalists. We're individualists. So we, we want to fight for the rights of the individual. And the more we bind ourselves into these meta structures of, of national, you know, federated governments, it just leads to, to more and more cl- uh, clashes, which right. results in war. Right. And, and it's all the meddling in the economy. It's, it's it, and, yeah. putting a dike in the dam and it's like a dike in the river. It's like what happened with NAFTA right. is by intertwining the economies, you had the rapid abandonment of blue collar workers or, you know, blue collar jobs in the United States, which is why we need to build the wall. Well, I mean, that's – I'm telling you, with Hillary Clinton being so influential in drafting the TPP, yeah. which is the new NAFTA, right. with all the um, Pacific and Asian countries, mm-hmm. that is going to be an issue. I have a feeling that is – people aren't talking about it, but the the blue-collar union labor worker is going to vote for Donald Trump sure. because Bernie Sanders isn't on the ticket. Because right. if it had been Sanders, this election's over. Right. Because it's Hillary and she helped author it. And now she helped author it, but she said she's against it. <laughs> Yeah, that that goes around. That happens. And so you it's, lose. It's the old Rubio argument. I, I help offer it, but then they changed it. Right. Was there was it. one clause, and right. now I'm just so against that clause. <laughs> you know, And so it's going to be interesting to see because that's 12% of the Democratic voter base. Hmm. And if you lose that 12%, Hillary Clinton loses Pennsylvania. She loses Ohio. She almost loses Wisconsin, and she loses Virginia. And so that, as long as Trump carries Florida, that's the election. See, like in 2012 – you you knew that Obama was going to get reelected. Oh yeah. 2008 you The had... first debate there was some hope because <laughs> right. Mitt Romney like became this person no one had ever seen right. before and just hammered away on the president and he yeah. was like who is this man that's so energetic? 2008 you you kind of suspected that Barack Obama is probably going to win. Oh. Yeah. And then when two... it was Sarah Palin the election was over. Right, two thousand two thousand four. Nobody knew either one. Although I kind of always thought Bush would get reelected, but I was a diehard Republican. This man, there is no telling what's going to happen whatsoever, and the Gary Johnson factor is legitimate. See, I am hesitant on that, and it's not because I have any lack of enthusiasm for Gary. It's that if this race gets close, the whole wasted vote thing comes into play. Sure. Because if it gets to where it's Hillary Trump 44, 42, or, or it's 40, 38, which is the more real, realistic scenario in polling, right, right. I think that the voter's going to get in there and the voter's going to say, ah, I don't even want to vote for Trump or I don't want to vote for Hillary. I want to vote for Gary, but I just can't leave the future of this country up to XYZ. And I think that's going to be a real polling effect in the ballot booth. Man, I just, I think... I hope it's uh, not the case. I, I've been a libertarian for almost 10 years, so it's hard for me to think that any libertarian would see Trump as a viable alternative <laughs> to know. Hillary, though. You know? Like, I, I know you can, but I can't. I, I just don't see... To me, they're the same person. Yeah, I mean, to me, you know, I've, I've some interesting... I have an interesting perspective on Trump, but, like, Gary Johnson's done very well, and I could not be more excited about his candidacy. Sure. And he's really... I tell you, the guy has seized the torch and run with it in a way I couldn't be more proud of him. Mm-hmm. Um, but the, I just I have a feeling there's two things going on in polling that we're not seeing. I think that's one is that mm-hmm. if it gets close, people are going to have the wasted vote syndrome affect them in the bowling bo- polling booth. And then the other one is that Donald Trump is the first ever candidate I've ever seen have the Hawthorne effect in polling, which is uh, where they didn't want to admit they weren't going to vote for a black candidate. Hmm. When they would do polling, they'd say they would, and then right. they would end up not voting for him based on race. And I have, like, I I run into this time and time again with Republicans. They don't want to admit it. They would say, oh, "I hate that Trump," but then they're going to vote for. But him. that's a, yeah, he had to get he had to win he the won primary. Somehow. Somehow. Yeah, yeah. And so I think he's going to be the first time that we ever see a guy poll at maybe uh, maybe like thirty two to thirty eight, and then somehow assuming the TPP is the big deal, I think it is somehow pull it off in the blue collar, the old industrial Midwest states. I don't know. I mean, he has to make it a big deal and he has to explain it. I mean, I just don't give a shit about the TPP. It's forcing her to own, um, you know, Bill Clinton passed NAFTA. Sure. And so it's forcing him, if he can convince the blue collar worker that it, and his messaging is that America first. Right. Which is, that's going to be, that's going to be the um, recurring theme you hear is America first, the American worker first. I'm not going to sell you out to the foreign companies because the TPP gives a whole, it's like the EU. It creates a separate level of governance Mm -hmm. for corporations. It's, It's a terrible deal. Right. All right. Well, uh, what other news are we missing? Anything else? Uh, I think that's about it. Um, 
I know from I'm helping with you know the Andy uh, Horning campaign and uh, his Republican opponent. Shockingly, he received an award for the group of thoracic surgeons, and he was the they were also his top donor. <laughs> he, he, he just repeatedly receives rewards <laughs> from all the organizations that he is the top donor. So if you're in District Eight and you're a right, um, you know, if you're a Republican leaning uh, libertarianish person, you should absolutely not vote for Larry Bouchon because he's already. His actual campaign office is up for sale. <laughs> More like Larry Dushon. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Feel exactly. free to mean that. Yeah, but so definitely give Andy Horning a look if you weren't already in District 8. And uh, that's all I got. All right. Well, uh, how do we end this? How should we end this, do you think? I, I mean, I don't know that we need to make it as formal as the big show. No. Um, I don't think we need a catchphrase. I kind of honestly, I'm, I'm over the catchphrase. Yeah. I think we've done pretty well. We'll talk to you next time. Uh, no, that doesn't sound very good. Um, next time we'll lay down the thunder. So I don't know. <laughs> I got nothing. We'll come up with a better one next time. Uh, and as <laughs> and as so, always. So for now, good night, America. Perfect. Uh, it's about three. Uh, so I gotta get out of here anyway. <laughs>